Hello, my name is David Desiletz. Uh, I'm a member of the editorial board of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. And today I'll be interviewing Michael Doherty, who is a fellow at uh, uh, Chapel Hill in North Carolina. And we will be discussing his paper entitled Esophageal Dilation with either, either Bougie or Balloon Technique as a Treatment for Eosinophilic Esophagitis, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So Michael, I want to congratulate you on a great paper. First off, uh, the one take home message that I got from this paper is that the perforation risk with eosinophilic esophagitis is really no greater than dilating for peptic strictures, for example. And it's always been dogma that eosinophilic esophagitis carries with it a high perforation risk. And those of us who do POEM, for example, and we tunnel down through the submucosa and we're used to looking at the circular muscle layer, when we see circular muscles after a dilation, I don't panic, but a lot of my colleagues do and they say, oh, I've had a perforation, I went right into the muscle layer. So your paper uh, disputes that and I want to thank you for doing that. So tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the methods in your paper, how you designed the study and uh, what the results were. Well, sure. Um, David, thanks for uh, interviewing me and um, to just talk about the methods. It's a systematic review. So we uh, were interested in that question of the, the dogma of um, higher perforation risk in uh, EOE. So we wanted to look at the literature and capture every um, significant adverse event that might have been a result from a dilation in EOE. And so uh, we searched a couple of databases, um, Embase, uh, PubMed, Web of Science, um, and just look for, looked at everything that described every study including abstracts even, uh, meeting abstracts and, and case reports um, that described a complication after a dilation procedure in EOE. And then we had um, dual review of all of those abstracts and then all of the full text to get a final list of, of includes um, that were appropriate. And we reported a, a number of complications of perforations, GI hemorrhage, hospitalizations, and then uh, chest pain uh, of any sort um, to try to get as, as close as we could to a pooled estimate of what, what we would expect to be the risk of that procedure. I noticed that all the perforations uh, that you pulled out of the, uh, the literature were managed non-operatively, is that correct? That's correct. So even when they did perforate, they all had a good outcome with non-operative management, which is another good thing to know. Absolutely. Most of the tables, you have a lot of tables in this paper, and most of them contain a statistic that I was not familiar with, and you call it the I-squared statistic. Uh, I'm not a statistician, I, and I suspect you may not be, but can you explain to me a little bit about that, or uh, am I digging a little too deeply there? Uh, well, I'll, I'll do my best off, off the top of my head. I-squared is, is a derivative of um, Cochrane's Q, I think, was what was previous, previously used, and it's, it's basically a statistical um, way to quantify how, how different studies are from one from the other. So you can look at the, the paper at, at face value uh, as, the, as a reviewer and see um, and make a, a clinical judgment, is this population similar to that population where the technique's the same and, and have an assessment of heterogeneity there? But also the statistical software can just look at the variance um, in, in the estimates from one paper and the other and give a a statistical estimate of how different um, the effect is between studies. Okay. One, one p-value that I didn't see in your paper that I would be curious is, was there a difference, uh, and I think you, you may have quoted that there was no difference, but was there a difference in the perforation rate when balloons were used versus when bougies were used? So we couldn't uh, find strong evidence that there was. There were, the problem is that there were only um, I think in the, in the whole group of nine perforations across all of the dilations that were described, only four described what type of dilator was, was used. And so there were two perforations in one and two in the other, and the denominator was bigger in the bougies, so it's a little lower risk. So you can't tell. Confidence really intervals are too overlapping, yeah. Okay. Well, that's really, uh, that's all I have as far as questions go, and uh, I, I, I want to thank you again for a great paper. And again, the take-home message here is perforation risk with EOE is not as high as we used to think, and, and very often they present with food impaction and they need to be dilated, and I'm not saying we should uh, cavalierly dilate them, but I mean, this paper tells us that it's safe to do so.
Thank, Thank you. you very much.